Hey fellow SweetScript developers, Eric from Stoic Software here again, and we are continuing our series on transitioning from SweetScript 1.0 to 2.0. Uh, in this edition, we shift our focus from working with body fields to working with sublists in SweetScript 2.0. As always, before we get started, every video I create is part of my Effective Sweet Script mailing list, where every day, uh, every weekday, I kind of dive into more examples or answer questions from readers and provide additional resources for the topic for the week. Uh, you can find out more about that and get signed up at EffectiveSweetScript.com, and you'll find a link in the video description. All right, let's get started. Earlier in the series, we looked at how the n slash record module allows us to work with records and body fields. That same module allows us to work with sublists on those records. So we'll be demonstrating how the 1.0 sublist APIs have been converted into 2.0, as well as discussing some significant changes to the behavior of sublists in 2.0. Uh, before we can examine the sublist APIs, we have to understand a very important SweetScript concept, uh, the record mode. So there are two different modes which you can use for working with records in SweetScript, standard mode and dynamic mode. Standard mode is the default mode. In this mode, the records fields are not sourced, calculated, or validated until you save the record. Uh, this means that when you're working in standard mode, you will need to create the record, save it, then reload it from the database in order to retrieve any formula or sourced uh, fields. Because nothing is sourced or calculated until the record is saved, uh, the order in which you set the fields on your record does not matter in standard mode. NetSuite will automatically set everything in the correct order when the record is submitted. Dynamic mode, however, is the real-time mode. Fields are calculated, sourced, and validated immediately as you set them in your script. Um, this mode largely mimics the behavior you would see in the UI. You will get errors for invalid values right away and any calculated uh, formula or sourced fields will be updated right away. Because of this real-time action, the order in which you set fields does matter in dynamic mode. So you as the developer are responsible for making sure your script sets fields in the same order that you would in the UI. The added overhead of the calculations, the sourcing, and the validations also means that setting field values in dynamic mode will take slightly longer than in standard mode. So you need to uh, be aware of that performance implication of working in dynamic mode. So now that we know what the record modes are, how does it actually look in development? Uh, we'll go through several examples very shortly, but first we need to know that there are actually two separate APIs for working with sublists based on the record mode. These separate APIs also existed in 1.0, so let's look at how they've all been translated into 2.0. Again, we assume that with the defined statement above the table there, our record module has been imported to our module as just R. Um, just like there were with record and body field APIs, there is essentially a one-to-one -one relationship between the 1.0 and 2.0 APIs working with sublists. There are some cosmetic changes to note in the function names where many of the 2.0 names have dropped the word item and they've replaced line item with sublist. Other than that, the functionality and the parameters you can provide to each function are largely unchanged between the two versions. All right, yet again, I bombard you with theory to start. Now it's time to get into the code. 
Here I've created an example sweetlet in both 1.0 and 2.0. I've set up the boilerplate of each script and I've added the code to initialize a new sales order in each. I've created separate functions for the various line operations that we'll be performing. That way we can focus just on the code for each operation uh, one at a time. Again, I will not be going through and testing this script in the video, as this is really just to show the API transition more than it is to show the outcomes of the code, as that has not changed between the versions. So the first thing we'll look at is how to add a new line item to our sales order. In both cases, you can see I've instantiated the sales order in standard mode, but for adding a new line, the API will actually be the same uh, regardless of the record mode. So we'll use our, or we'll rather implement our add line function. And we're going to add the item with the ID of 123 and a quantity of 5 in 1.0. This should look familiar to most, but we'll step through it anyway. Um, when we're adding a line, we use the API that basically mimic, mimics exactly what a user would do in the UI. We have to first select the line we want to work with using select new line item. This selects the next available line in the sublist, so it goes to the empty line at the bottom of the sublist. Next, we set uh, any appropriate columns that we want. In this case, we're just setting the item and the quantity. And lastly, we have to uh, save our changes to the line using commit line item, which is just like the user clicking the add button when or after they've made all their changes to the line. Okay, now the same process in 2.0. I'm not sure there's too much of interest here on the 2.0 side. Uh, it's essentially a direct port of the 1.0 API, so it is a very straightforward transition to make. So now that we've added a line to our sales order in standard mode, we need to save it and then reload the record to make sure we have the latest data. I'm going to uncomment the code I already have here on both sides. And notice that in both 1.0 and 2.0, I am reloading the record in dynamic mode. So after we've loaded the record, we want to update the line we just added. So perhaps we want to increase the quantity by two. This will require us to first read the quantity value from the line, then add two to the value, and then set it again on the same line. So again, this should look familiar if you've worked with sublists in 1.0. Um, note that we use parse float when we read the value from the sublist to make sure that uh, to make sure that we get a numeric value instead of a string. NetSuite is notoriously inconsistent at returning typed values, uh, or maybe it's very consistent at only returning strings. I'm honestly not sure which it is. Um, this has not changed in 2.0, so we want to maintain this habit of parsing making sure we're parsing the correct value, a type of value, out of the fields that we're reading. Here, you need to notice a very important distinction between 1.0 and 2.0. 
In 1.0, the first line of a sublist has an index of 1. So when we select the first line, we specify an index of 1 in 1.0. In 2.0, the first line now has an index of 0, just like uh, a typical JavaScript array does. Um, I feel like this is a very welcome correction to just a baffling aspect of SweetScript 1.0. But other than that, as you can see, the flow is still the same between 1.0 and 2.0. We select the line we want first, then we modify it, and then we commit it. Um, since our record is in dynamic mode, our changes to the field and the record are sourced, calculated, and validated immediately. So as soon as we change the quantity in dynamic mode, um, things like our sales orders total uh, and the amount on this line will update immediately. They would not update until we saved the entire record if we were in standard mode. Okay, the next example will be inserting a line. So just like the user can insert a line at any point in the sublist by clicking the insert button we can also insert lines using SweetScript, and the api for that is nearly identical to that of adding a new line we use the insert line item function in 1.0 and specify the index where we want to insert the line. Uh, in 1.0, again, by specifying an index of one, we have said, or we're saying that we want to insert this new line at the beginning of the sublist. So this new line will now be the, will become the first line on the sublist. Again, notice that in order to insert the new line at the beginning of the sublist, in 2.0, we specify an index of zero instead of index one as we did back in 1.0. Other than that, the calls we make are identical to adding a new line. In our last example today, we're going to remove a line, but we're going to do so by using a function that I don't see too many SweetScript developers leveraging um, the function to find a sublist line based on a specific value. The ability to find a line based on a value exists in both 1.0 and 2.0, so that's what we'll see. Previously, in our script, we inserted item 77 into our sublist. Now, we want to remove that item from the list, but let's pretend we don't actually know which line it's on. Before we can remove a line, we need to know its index. We need to know which line we're removing. And we can use the sublist's find functionality to locate the correct index. So here in 1.0, we use find line item value to determine the index of the line on the item sublist that has a value of 77 in its item column. And we're storing that in a variable, the result of that in a variable named index. If there are multiple lines that match your criteria, find line item value returns the index of the first one that it finds. If no lines match your criteria, then it will return negative one, which is why we check here to make sure that it's not negative one. 
So if it is negative one, then we didn't find item 77, so we have nothing to do, and we just exit our function. Then we move on to actually remove uh, the line that we've found. And everything will look very similar in 2.0. So in 2.0, the find function's name has changed slightly, but other than that, it behaves exactly the same. Before we wrap up, there is one important change to SweetScript 2.0 client scripts that impacts how we work with sublists. In 1.0 client scripts, there is an event called recalc. This event fires whenever a change has been made to a sublist that impacts the total of a transaction. So let's say you are editing a sales order in the UI and you adjust the quantity of a line. That change will obviously change the total of the order. So NatSuite will fire the recalc event to any client scripts. However, if instead of changing the quantity, you change something that did not impact the total, like perhaps the location or the item description, then NetSuite will not fire recalc. Um, this made it problematic to detect and handle changes to sublists that did not impact the total of a transaction. In 2.0, there is no longer a recalc event. It has been completely replaced by an event named sublist changed. Unlike recalc, this event gets fired whenever any line change uh, gets committed, regardless of what that change was. So whether you are inserting, removing, adding, or modifying an existing line, and no matter which columns on that line you modify, uh, sublist changed will get fired as soon as you commit that line. So this is much more consistent, less confusing uh, than recalc, and it allows us to build some far more robust sublist interactions into our client scripts. And that's it for this lesson. Uh, you've now seen how to work with sublists in SweetScript 2.0. Uh, if you liked what you saw in this video, hit that thumbs up button. Go share what you learned with somebody else. Click subscribe to stay tuned with the rest of our series on transitioning from SweetScript 1.0 to 2.0. As always, thanks for watching. Keep learning, keep sharing, and I'll see you next time.